Now we'll go over to the conform page. As I mentioned, we are going to start out with the simplest case, importing an XML project. And because of the way that XML import works in DaVinci Resolve, we actually get to skip the browse page. We'll revisit the browse page when we do EDL import. But for XML, we jump straight to the conform page and it's very simple. The timeline management pane is where all of the controls exist for loading and exporting XML and AAF projects. If I click load, I can go ahead and find my XML project. There it is. Click open. And I see the load XML dialog. It specifies the source file that I've selected. It specifies the import session. I get to name the import session. By default, this name is the name of the sequence that was exported. I get to define the master session start timecode, which also defaults to the timecode specified by the XML project file. Now here are two checkboxes that are important. Automatically set project settings conforms the project to match the settings found inside of the XML project. That will override the resolution and the frame rate. Again, if you change your mind and decided, ah, I need to do an EDL export, it was very important to set timeline frame rate. But in this case, the timeline frame rate will be overridden at the time you bring this project in. Now, once that's set up and the media comes in, that's it. You don't get to change the timeline frame rate again. So just be aware. Another checkbox specifies automatically import source clips into media pool. This lets you bring in the source media at the same time as you're bringing in your project. If we wanted to, we could change the timeline resolution, but the default is acceptable. Same thing with the frame rate, the default is acceptable. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Next, we're given a navigation window with the title of please select the folder containing source clips to be imported. So we want to go ahead and find our media folder. Now I happen to know that the media is on Devraid, so I can open that up. There is a subfolder intro to resolve project. I happen to know that the media exists within a few different subfolders of this Dynapep Hero and if you've downloaded the media independently, you're going to know where you put it. But there are two folders, a media folder and a VXFX folder. And I want to pull media from both folders. So what I can do is I can go ahead and select any enclosing folder. In this operation, all subfolders will be automatically traversed. If I choose Intro to Resolve Project and click OK, then DaVinci Resolve is going to look through those folders, automatically add everything that needs to be added, and I'm done. Now, a word of warning. It may be tempting to go, oh, I'll just go ahead and select the enclosing volume and let Resolve search the entire hard drive. That will work well if the hard drive doesn't have very much on it. But if you have a large volume with a ton of media and a bunch of files, that operation may end up taking quite a long time, just to warn you. Here we go. We've gone ahead and imported that XML project. Now, something I want to call to your attention, if you look in the timeline management pane, there are actually two sessions in here. The first is the master session. And the master session corresponds to the master timeline down along the bottom of the conform page. And it's simply a string out of every single clip sorted by absolute timecode value within the project. As many clips as you've got, they're all going to be down here, even if you have clips that aren't directly specified by the sequence that you imported itself. The master session is helpful in situations where perhaps you are importing a lot of media for a project that hasn't been edited yet. You can use Resolve for, for example, uh, a one light grading process. 
prepping media that you're ingesting straight from the shoot, giving it a fast grade, and then exporting offline media for use by the editor. The master session lets you organize all of the media in such a way so that you can perform that task without actually needing to have a project coming from an LE. So that's what the master session is all about. Secondarily here, we also see the Dynapep prepped session, and that's the actual edit. You're not seeing anything here because the person who prepped the edit was a little bit sloppy and left a lot of blank tracks in the sequence. But if I scroll down, here we can see there is the project. To zoom in, I simply use the scroll wheel or the scroll area of my mouse, and I can zoom in or out that way. If I'm zoomed in, I can go ahead and navigate back and forth, but you can see I've got the whole edit right here ready for me to work on. Notice the edit comes in with transitions, and because I'm using DaVinci Resolve 8, I also have all of my superimposed clips in this multi-track sequence having come in and everything's all set up. I can go ahead and start grading. One thing I want to bring to your attention is if we go back to the browse page, in the media pool, there's all the media. And the media pool here mirrors the media pool in the upper left-hand corner. Even though I brought in the project and media at the same time, the media is still organized separately from the project, which means at this point, if I wanted to, I could actually bring in an additional edit. Maybe the editor has gone ahead and re-edited the sequence. I can go ahead and bring in that re-edited sequence if the editor exports another XML. I can bring it in, but this time, if I click the load button and choose that XML, I can choose to turn off automatically import source clips into media pool. At this point, when I click OK, it's going to ask me to give a name. Since it already exists, I'm being warned I need to choose a different name. I'm just going to call this updated Dynapep. Click OK. So at this point, I've now brought in a second session, a second version of the timeline that links to the same media. That is the utility of being able to explicitly specify whether or not you want to import media at the same time as an XML. So now that I've got this all set up, I'm going to go back to the config page. Notice we've just done a slightly perilous thing. We've done all of this work with the default project, which is basically the blank unsaved project that is first created when you open Resolve. I want to go ahead and press Command S to save. I'm going to go ahead and give this a name. I'm going to call this imported XML class project. Click Create, and now I've got my imported class project. So now we're going to go ahead and import the exact same project in a different way. 